What's up guys, this is Anthony from Hawkeye Rods. I'm here today at Lexus of Wesley Chapel. Carlos and Tim has given us this exclusive comparison between the all new 2021 Lexus LC500 convertible versus the 2018 Lexus LC500 coupe. Liquid platinum exterior, new for 2021, is the convertible. This is the meticulously designed lightweight soft top, but it still keeps the same silhouette coupe styling as you can see. You're gonna also be receiving a retuned sports S plus drive mode and suspension, or you could just tune it yourself and lower it like we have right next to us. Going hard against the German brands with rich, elegant exterior and interior. Is it a supercar? Is it a sports car? Either way, for 2021, we now have a convertible or you can stick with the coupe with the carbon fiber roof line. We're gonna go over all the specs and details, starting now. Lexus has upped its game with the LC500, giving the next generation headlight assembly. This is half the size of the normal one. It's LED projected auto leveling. You'll have your traditional long hood that has the multi aerodynamic lines. The side, but I like how it pushes away from the in-large Lexus grille. And as you're seeing, you will have the metal look in the interior with the chrome around it. And just the setup, it gives that nice proportion of luxury and sports elegance all in one. Ground clearance, even though you got this spoiler lip, on the regular is gonna be between 5.2 to 5.5 inches. This vehicle has been lowered with the TI2000 RSR down. The width at 75.6 inches and a height of 53.2 inches. The aerodynamic fascia just really gives the German rivals a run for its money. The fenders with the geometry keeps the sports car heritage in closing these 21 inch fog alloy wheels with polished finish in gloss black accents. Six piston mono block aluminum front calipers. The disc reading at 15.7 inches, it's a two piece ventilated. The rear is a four piston mono block aluminum calipers with 14.1 inch is the disc reading, two piece ventilated as well. Torsum limited slip rear differential, ride control adaptive suspension, you're gonna have an independent double joint multi-link front and rear suspension with coil springs. So the vehicle is really set to go deriving straight after the German brands. You got the side air vent, it really gives a good aesthetics. I like that they put the high gloss over the mirror caps because it just makes it look more sleek with the design. A length at 187.4 inches, a wheelbase at 113 inches. The only concern that I would have with this particular vehicle is the weight. It's over 4,500 pounds, but again, this is more derived probably for a Grand Tour, which we'll see in the drive, but it definitely will still give that sports heritage, and this is definitely a contender with all those aerodynamic lines and the styling. Comparing it to the coupe, whereas on Tim's, we have the 22 inch by nine and a half Volson wheels. The rear will have 11 inch on the width. You're gonna have the powder coating done by Sharp Custom Tampa. Lowered springs, like we were saying, so the dynamics and the geometry will be changed, which we'll see on the drive. And the fact that this is a coupe, you're gonna be saving about 200 pounds opposed to the soft top convertible. LC tail lamps that echo the L-shape Lexus identifies itself to the rear. Lexus first designed using 80 
LEDs per lamp and a one-way mirror to produce the distinctive multi-reflection effect. Thanks to Anokio Toyota, chief branding officer and master driver to push Lexus to build these LCs so close to the concept that it's unbelievable. Dual exhaust, chrome tailpipe finishers. I like the black high gloss aesthetics over it, front and rear parking sensors, and the aerodynamic lines, whether you get the convertible or the coupe, you can see it keeps that sleek look. Going inside to your cargo at 3.4 cubic feet, you cannot put the rear seats down at any fold. You know, at the end of the day, whether you get the convertible or the coupe, you're gonna just enjoy this naturally aspirated 5.0 liter V8. Let's hear that exhaust though. Whether you get the 2018 or the 2021, you can hear that exhaust note underneath the hood of this LC500 packs the performance of a V8 5.0 liter producing 471 horsepower with 398 pound-feet of torque paired with a 10-speed direct shift automatic transmission. Getting a zero to 60 will be about two tenths of a second slower with the convertible at 4.6 seconds, a top speed at 168 miles per hour. Gas consumption is around 15 to 25 mpgs. Lexus safety system includes your pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, all-speed dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert, lane keep assist, Assist, intelligent high beams. I love the convertible and the fact that Lexus kept the design so close to the concept that it's remarkable. Whether you get the convertible or the coupe, the styling is definitely going to set the appearance, whether in a rear view perspective or in a parking lot, but the question still needs to be entertained. Are these competitors to the rivals? Let me know what you think of the exterior of these LC500s as we go inside, go over the tech, and take this for our test. Entering work. inside the coupe, LC500, headspace, still not gonna be a problem. Leg space, no problems at all. The main difference that you're gonna see when we compare this to the convertible is the interior. This one's gonna have an Alcantara insert, black with contrast stitching in white. You're still gonna get the bolstered seats. Everything is more or less the same in the interior. So the dash is gonna be flat. You got that cool retro pattern in the dash with the analog clock, a 10.3 multi-function infotainment screen. You will have your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, Wi-Fi hotspot through Lexus Enforce, a CD player and a DVD player, dual climate control settings, the touchpad because it's a non-touch screen infotainment, the gear lever and the way it's set up, just a very clean setup. You can open this up to give another cup holder, opening up in here and you got two USBs and a 12 volt with some storage. The nice thing about it is the designing is very clean in the interior and elegant so it keeps that race heritage soft on both elbows, the Alcantara in the door panel, three memory seats, one touch up and down for all the windows and you have some storage that can fit probably about two or three 16.9 ounce water bottles. Alcantara headliner for the coupe as well. Let's check out the back seats. Now whether you're in the convertible or the coupe, one thing that I will note before we go into the convertible is the fact that this particular vehicle is gonna be a little bit tighter to fit somebody because you can't put the top down. So headroom, my head is more or less against the headliner. Legroom, my legs are pretty much completely against the back seat. So fitting two adults my size or even a little bit shorter, it's not really gonna be something preferable, but the good thing is you have extra storage back here if you wanted to take this out for the weekend. Now let's jump into the convertible, check out the interior specs. Entering inside this LC500 Lexus with the top down because with the convertible, that's exactly what I'd be doing. I just leave this in my garage with the top down all the time. 36.7 inches of headroom, 42.6 inches of legroom, circuit red with black, you got the stitch work, 10-way power adjustments, heated and ventilated front seats. You also have the heated mechanism right here for your neck. So if it is cold, you can still put the top down and not worry about it. The bolstering is sport-derived, driver-focused cockpit. The dashboard is flat. We have the heads-up display. We got the 10.3 navigation LCD multi-display. Now, it is not touchscreen. You have to do everything through the touch knob, which is basically like a laptop 
for a mouse. Leather wrap steering wheel, you got the perforated, the soft leather on the top and bottom, metal paddle shifters, the gauge cluster is sport derived, so you have your RPMs right in front of you. And just the whole setup, I feel like I'm just ready to take this vehicle on the track. Opening up on here, it's a two step, so you have a cup holder here and a cup holder here. Open up and you're gonna have two USBs, a 12 volt and some storage. The nice thing is for that convertible top, you just flip this open, so everything is clean hidden compartments more or less to make it even more luxurious. The door panels and for the elbows, it's pretty soft on both sides. You got the race inspired door panel as well. One touch up and down for the windows, three memory seats for the driver. Storage in the door panel, you could probably fit two or three 16.9 ounce water bottles. But at the end of the day, this vehicle is something that you're just gonna enjoy on a long journey. The way it's structured, you're definitely gonna feel sport derived Let's check out the back seats. For the back seat, there's no need to have any adults my size or even a little bit shorter. You got 32.1 inches of headroom, 28 inches of legroom. If I had the top down, I could fit. It's just gonna be some issues because all the air from the aerodynamics is gonna hit somebody tall like me. Obviously, I fit with headroom. I moved the seat up a little bit because I can't fit in the position that I'd be sitting and I moved the passenger seat all the way forward to show you the space. Realistically, just leave it for some storage or put the top down and enjoy a nice sunny day in Florida. Taking the 2021 Lexus LC500 convertible out, I have it in Sports Plus, which will change the gauge cluster to red RPM with white dial. So I do like that in this 10 speed automatic transmission. I like the fact that the paddle shifters are big too. I already feel very aggressive, especially with that long hood, just the way it feels. It really sets a good tone with the vehicle. Now it is a little bit less than 500 horsepower, but realistically speaking, this is a V8 naturally aspirated 5.0 liter. So it's definitely gonna be a delight. Almost 400 pound feet of torque right at 398 pound feet. So it has all the power derived that you really need for it. Now this one is not gonna be as low as the 2018, which we will do right afterwards, but the reason why I wanted to particularly drive this one is because they did retune a couple of the components so we can actually see what the difference is and if there is a difference whenever you lower it and put bigger wheels on the vehicle. So, so far, very smooth transition. You're gonna get that Lexus suspension, which is just ever so soft. The exhaust note, I do like it. You can hear it good. Wind hardly feel any wind at all. So I can actually still feel the air condition with the top down. So that is definitely a plus, especially with a convertible top. Give it some throttle. Here we go, guys. Open it up a little bit. Oh, it sounds lovely. It is a lovely note. And the nice thing about it is if you don't want to hear that exhaust note, there's so many gears, you can just keep changing it to get better gas consumption, even though it's a V8. The best part really is the fact that it's a convertible, it's a sports car, a supercar image all mixed in one. This is something that's definitely a delight. And the windscreen, the way it's positioned, it just really has a good aerodynamic flow to it. Comfortable even with these upgraded tires. I can see through everything perfectly fine. You do have blind spot monitoring, all the safety technology that you need to move forward. Another nice point is if you are looking to get, you know, a couple years older, there's not necessarily much that's changed. And if you get one tuned, which you'll see in the next drive, it should be a little bit more aggressive. And honestly speaking, I think the setup on this is really good. About two tenths of a second slower than the hardtop or the coupe. The steering, you can see it's very dynamic. The good thing too is when you release the gas pedal, it will start slowing down for you. And I mean, you got six pistons in the front, four pistons in the rear. You're not gonna have to worry about brakes in this vehicle. You're gonna stop on a dime. All right, this time we have it in manual mode. So we are going to operate the gear shifting. Turn radius, you're gonna get really tight, about a lane and a half. Got it in manual, giving it some gas, set you back like it should. That's, oh man, that exhaust note. It is a V8 5.0 liter. You know, the days are gonna be coming where you're not gonna be able to get such an engine. And this is such a treat because everything is getting smaller, turbocharged, twin turbos. It just takes away from the true essence of a sports car design. 
Now, obviously, there's three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that, I'd be buying the vehicle. But realistically speaking, it's hard to find three things that I dislike. And I'm not saying that because I'm being biased. It's just the fact that it really ticks all the boxes. I mean, things that I like, it's convertible. And it gives you that essence of a supercar. You got that nice exhaust note. Disadvantage, I guess one would be you don't have anything that you can make it sound louder unless you put an aftermarket spec to those tips. The next thing that I do like about it, the stance, the proportion layout, it just really does give a supercar look, even though it's a sports car design. They just really stuck to that heritage of the coupe designing. So thank you, Lexus, for doing that. The third thing that I like is the fact that I mean, it's super easy to drive. It's not something that you have to really worry about. If you get into it for a test drive or to purchase it, you can just do it pretty much right out of the box. The steering is pretty good. It's very tight. You do feel the dynamics. I guess the second thing I dislike is that there's no touch screen. They get the touch pad. That is something that I always knock because realistically, it seems like you would spend more money in the design to put that touch pad than it would just to put an actual touch screen navigation. But to find a third thing that I dislike, it's kind of hard because, I mean, braking is good, speed is good. This is definitely something that you can just play with. And I mean, look at it. You don't really have to worry too much because this one is not so low to the ground, but we're gonna see how that 2018 coupe is with the lowered suspension. And we're gonna do that right now. All right, we're gonna try to get it as straight as possible. We have it where we can do manual shifts, giving it some throttle. Oh, I love it, that V8. 5.0 liter oh man over 470 horsepower it goes it goes it goes wow now because the setup is a little bit lower to the ground with the upgraded wheels i will note that you can hear the road noise and it does feel a little bit more agile the dynamics in the steering it actually feels a lot more precise too i will say it's a lot more stiffened and rigid so i do like the feel of that comparing it to the convertible i always like convertible but if you're looking for something more track based this is definitely the way to go i could see this probably getting a lower four point a lower zero to 60 timing because of the setup that's set on this if you put an active exhaust it will pretty much filter out any of those noises that you hear but for the most part it is quiet you got the blind spot monitoring you can see pretty much all over the cabin it's a smaller car we are a little bit lower to the ground and you can feel it. I really have to thank Tim for giving us the opportunity to show this on Hawkeye Rides today because this is definitely a one of a kind type of a comparison because when you get something that has a little bit more miles to it and it's driven a little bit more, broken in more, you could really feel the dynamics. Braking, the same thing. You're not gonna have any issues with the braking. Turn radius, I would presume, should be a little bit tighter just because of the setup that we have. So we're going to see now, we're gonna to try to do it at a stop point and it really is tighter, like half, half a lane tighter. Throttle at two. Oh man. It livens up and it goes ever so quick. Gives enough power to push you back on the seat and that exhaust note, man, it's a symphony like nothing else. I mean, who cares about upgraded sound systems when you got a naturally aspirated V8 5.0 liter? I mean, realistically speaking, who cares about that? You really just want to hear that exhaust note. I tend to keep it more in like an eighth or ninth gear instead of a tenth gear. And realistically speaking, I think that's you know a happy medium too for this engine. I like the fact that, you know, it is more rigid and I feel more aggressive inside the cabin if i was to take a vehicle for a weekend i would suggest go with the convertible but if you really wanted to take this a little bit on the track obviously the numbers are not up there with the zero to 60 meaning under three seconds or whatnot but you're going to have a ton of fun with the setup especially with the way the hood structure is and the dynamics of the interior of the cockpit it really sets a nice flair to it driving it on eco mode really all it does is it's 
not going to make you hear that exhaust note. So you're going to hear a lot more wind noise. You're going to get a little bit better gas consumption. But realistically speaking, this type of engine, you need to let it breathe. So just push the throttle here and there because you really want to get out all that carbon. You don't want to build it up. And realistically speaking, you want to hear that exhaust note. Thickier tires are set with this. we got the Michelin Pilot Sport. So, I mean, you can definitely weave in and out as you're seeing without any issues at all. And I just like the fact that, you know, I feel very airtight in the vehicle. I know that I can take these corners without any issues. And that's the nice thing whenever you have a setup like this. We're gonna take this back to Lexus of Wesley Chapel, go over the reverse camera and wrap this review up. Switching to reverse, you do have trajectory. The nice thing about it is you have a good little grid line too, so it makes it pretty easy to reverse and see everything with the front and rear parking sensors. I'd like to thank Tim and Carlos here at Lexus of Wesley Chapel for giving us these two Lexus LC 500s, the convertible and the coupe for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button, check out the details of merchandise and everything we do here. Hawkeye rocks.